Well, Scott, um, Scott and Keith, you did so much for me that I can't hardly believe it. Taking us to New York, downtown, Statue of Liberty, and just a nice, Scott Bush showed me more in four days than I could in a month. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, he did. He had a little advantage though. He yeah. was living out there for a few years. He was well acquainted. He knew where he was going in the end. I remember though, Merle, um, I was I was the tour guide in New York because I had lived there for a time. But whenever we got on the subway, I always had you tell us where we were going. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Merle could I figure had, out that New York subway. You you caught onto that so quickly. That was great. You had to be ready to go when the, when the bus came. That's all I was through that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that one of my most special memories since we started this company was that was that New York trip. It was. Oh, we had fun, didn't we? <laughs> so we uh, I remember I had gone out early and then met you guys yeah and it was a big deal for me to have the we had a limousine and and they had the sign that said kirkhoff and i wanted that guy to meet us at the uh airport. at the airport and then i remember it's sort of a classic keith story is we the driver had taken us out to the car but of course keith loaded all the bags in the car for the guy <laughs> the guy was only about five foot tall <laughs> luggage weighed 150 pounds and then keith sat in the front seat of the limousine so uh, it turned out to be the smart place to set because the air conditioner didn't work at the back so let's got fool he was sweating and i was a nice fire. <laughs> so it was merle and imelda and keith and i and then um i think both jason and and michael were out there for a time and it was a great trip i'll tell you one of my <laughs> One of the memories I really like was we had a great day. Well, we it didn't start out that great. We started trying to go to Alice Island, yep. but the line was very, very long. So then we went to the to um, the Empire State Building, also a long line. I, I kind of finagled our way up a little bit, yeah. but uh, but we had had a long day, been on the been on our feet a while. So we went back. We were staying at the uh, at the Waldorf, and um, there's a bar there. I think oh, it's called the no. Bull the Bull and Bear. And um, we walked in and sat down, Merle and Keith and Imelda and I, and we ordered, and Kilmer, and we ordered a cocktail. And uh, it Merle was going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah it, it tasted so yeah, good that we, we ended up getting another. And uh, we came time to close out, and, and Merle was insistent on paying. I, I got it, guys. And he whips out a $100 bill and gives it to the, to the fella. Martin. And the guy just kind of stands there and looks at him. <laughs> Glass is one hundred and two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> so much to Merle's uh, amazement. I took the, one look at Scott and I said, "Uh oh." <laughs> the hundred dollars didn't quite cover it. So ever since then, we've had kind of a deal. Do you remember that? <laughs> the last one by. <laughs> so when we're in the big cities, uh, Kilmer or I buy, and when we come back to Manning to the VFW, oh, yeah. Merle always That's buys. <laughs> That's more down to earth. <laughs> I think another interesting part of that story is the dad whipped out another ten dollar bill, so he had a hundred and ten. And I'm pretty sure that uh, bartender was a little disappointed in his tip. <laughs> I a little bit more than that. The uh, I, I thought that was enough, a hundred ten dollars. <laughs> Just a couple of drinks. But we did or didn't we? Did. What do you remember most about your dad? What what kind of guy was he? Oh, dad. Yeah was Alphonse. Dad was all business. Actually, all business. I don't know how Dad was all in the, involved in all the whiskey deals, but he was around town, and he was very honest with his family. He gave us all the ending up with a decent start in farming. Naturally, it was all farming. Mm -hmm. And then he'd weed in a few stories about uh, getting caught. This is later. Uh, Peddling moves. Right. And I and I know that's what saved us in the farm. Because dad couldn't borrow fifteen dollars one day. He just couldn't borrow fifteen dollars. Tell that story, Dad. That's an interesting story. The neighbors were telling him, throw it up, Al, you'll never make it. Dad said he hung on for just another couple of months and he got some finance from Carol. Fifteen dollars to get carried over to the next hump, you might say. Was it to harvest the crops or plant the crops? That I really don't know, but I know they what you call completely broke. I've been in the auction business and some guys tell me, hey, Merle, have you ever been completely broke? And I said, really, I can't say I've been completely broke, but I've been hard up. 
And that's about the way it was at that. What, what year would it have been? Oh, it's got to be 20. 1929. No, 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 no. 29, somewhere in there. I remember the 34 Ford, but I don't remember the Model T. And that is when I kept things in good shape. Good to work for. Everybody said they got paid. And all business. Do you think his uh, the fact he was all business was a reason that his Templeton Rye was known as, as being? Oh, I think so. Yeah. High quality. There's, we live north of north of Templeton and south of Templeton. And south of Templeton it was a little bit later years. You know, just a little bit later that was enough to. You were born north of Templeton. I was born north. Of but then. What you call the home place is south of Templeton, where you grew up. Yeah, that's right. So finish that tie together where he was fifteen dollars short. He got a loan. Yeah. Tie that to the whiskey because we missed that well, part. So I think it's interesting there. We should talk about the the bank that actually gave Grandpa the money. How he was turned down here. So and just go back to that part of the story where, okay, and yeah. then and then tie it to the whiskey. So back then, but he was completely Moan. It was Pat Moan's dad, right? Well, get, get just say he start with he yeah. was completely broke, and then I think he okay. Into it was no surprise to hear that someone else went broke or anything. It was a disgrace to go broke if you could help it. And Dad tried at Templeton to get that loan at that time. And they turned him down. They said, Al, hey, let's go ahead and sell out. So they made one more trip to Carroll to Ray Moan. That's it. Was the banker up there. And through a nice visit, he, lo he loaned him $15. And that was a day or night difference between Success and not success, you might say, is farming. And the uh, Al Kirka family all turned around to enjoy land if they could buy it. And I think it was quite a turning point. And I have to give Templin Wright Whiskey the credit for bringing it through. So you see, if you could make five gallons of whiskey at a night, you did pretty good. And it was, we lived then along a good road. And we had there bums and tramps that would come down, and Mom fell for that. She wanted to get a cup of coffee for that one guy, and then actually what he wanted was whiskey. And then the revenue, he was a revenue man. So that was the end of that business. So Merle, It's a long story as to what all happened after that. Sure. Do you think, it's pretty amazing to think that, what was this, less than 80-some years ago, $15.00. Made all the difference. Oh, oh yeah. Wow, that was well, big. Scott, didn't you have that? Was that similar to your dad? My grandpa. Same stuff. My great grandfather. I want to say fifteen dollars as well. Um, couldn't get it in the Wall Lake. I'm sorry. Oh boy, I should know this. Couldn't get fifteen dollars from the Oldie Bolt Bank, so he borrowed it from the Wall Lake Bank, which was sort of a new bank at the time. And. I guess the same deal. That's yeah. sort of when oh. things turned around, and you know he was obviously never a wealthy man. But to oh. the day he died, he only worked. He only did business with the Wall Lake Bank, and mm -hmm. he, um, you know, he remembered that. And it's it's pretty amazing. My grandfather used to tell that story to us all the time, and I think well, trying to in, invoke the whole loyalty thing. thing. Gus or Dad or two the two businessmen, they'd argue over a cup of coffee. Who's going to pay for it? <laughs> they just didn't have a cup of coffee. Did, um, you said earlier, Merle, uh, you called your dad Al. Is that what his friends would have called him? Al or Al, Alphonse? Al, a lot of times, A.M. What's that? A.M. Kirk, Alphonse Martin. They, they, they did that. The, bro the brothers, they all had different initials. Okay. That was quite common. So what do you remember the most about your dad specifically? Well, if you really want to know, it's that corn picking sign. Picking ear corn by hand because I picked with Dad. That yeah, was big stuff. My brother Orville chipped with my picked corn with my mother, and I had to keep my roll up. And Dad and I we did a lot of conversation together. Mm -hmm. And I remember one thing at the end of the day where he started singing and whistling. <laughs> so I knew we was getting to the end of the row. 